This week's weekly ritual is dedicated to the memories of hardcore metal music management legend Scott Koenig, D-Pop of the Bush Tetris, Sean Kilkenny of Mucky Pup and Dog Eat Dog, and Tony Jacome of Shallow North Dakota, who all passed away last week. Rest in peace. What's up, everybody? It's Keefe, and you're watching the Weekly Ritual, Ghost Cult's new show, right here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. GhostCultMag.com is a small business. With that out of the way, let's get into it. In case you missed it, features at Ghost Cult. We kick this week's features off with an announcement. Ghost Cult Mag has turned nine years old this week. Thanks to everybody for making it possible, staff past and present, those we've lost along the way, labels, management, bands, and fans, we love and thank you all. We'll be celebrating with our own birthday party on Gimme Metal November 9th with a radio show hosted by me. We kick this week's features off with our interview with High Priestess Nighthawk of Heavy Temple. Their new album, Lupi Amoris, is out now on Magnetic Eye Records. We also interviewed Brian of Gemini Syndrome. Their new album is out today. And on the podcast front, Gary Alcock interviewed Netherhall, a prog band from the UK, at Bloodstock Open Air to tie off our coverage. You can also catch me on the Galatially Musical Podcast. I'm on once a week of the twice a week podcast with host Nick Cameron, where we yap about beers, swearing, and metal bands. We kick off our series on King's X today. You still have time to enter our Halloween contest with Death Metalers Casket Robbery, Carve, or Horrific Pumpkin, and win merch from the band. It's that simple. Sign up at the link below. And finally, I'd like to just give a shout out to Halloween and October, my favorite month of the year. Fuck Pumpkin Spice. It's time for long sleeve metal shirts and hoodies. Sometimes the producer puts the sound effects in And now, the news rundown. Tours and Fest are back, my friends. We kicked the news off this week with a shit ton of Tours and Festival announcements. Cannibal Corpse, the heroes we need are back. They're going to do their Violence Unimagined headline tour this winter with support from their label mates Whitechapel and Revocation and Shadow of Intent. And the tour is supporting not just Cannibal Corpse's recent new album, but 40 years of Metal Blade Records. Huzzah! And congrats to Metal Blade. Red Hot Chili Peppers have formally announced their huge world tour of 2022. They got a new album coming soon, probably a new single drop immediately. Immediately? Imminently. Imminently. Fuck me. Symphonic Metal Legends Nightwish have booked a North American tour, a brief North American tour of next spring with their fellow Symphonic Metalers, Based in Black. Stoner and Doom fans rejoice Desert Fest New York Edition will return to New York City next May and it will take place at the Knockdown Center with a pre-party at the legendary St. Vitus Bar. Full announcement and lineups coming in early November. Avatar has been forced to postpone the remainder of their U.S. tour dates as the lead singer, Johannes Eckerstrom, has come down with COVID-19. Get well soon, Johannes. The band is going to try to rebook those dates surrounding Ship Rock to 2022. Clutch has also been forced to postpone some dates due to COVID-19 complications as members of their road crew came down with the deadly virus. Hopefully they're getting well, and Clutch will hit the road again very soon. Danny Wimmer presents Aftershock Festival. Set a record this weekend, coming back after a year off with 145,000 people appearing over four days. It was crazy. Metallica headlined twice and played the Black Album. I was there, I saw it, it was amazing. Misfits headlined on Saturday. Thursday night was headlined by Cypress Hill and a bunch of Bay Area thrash bands and Anthrax. Tom Hunting made his return from cancer to play a full set with Exodus. Dave Lombardo jammed with Body Count. Tim from Rise Against played with Pennywise. Rancid and Dropkick Murphys jammed together. It was epic. Tickets are on sale right now for Aftershock 2022 for only $10 down. Can't beat it. Death Metal Legends Dying Fetus have announced a headline tour of North America with support coming from Terror and a few other bands. Hardcore Legends Crown of Thorns are finishing their headline tour this weekend with dates in New York State, Boston, and Illy, Philadelphia. Ross the Boss has announced the Evolution of Fire Tour for 2022 in Europe. The band is cautiously optimistic about the end of the pandemic and they are booking a slew of dates, but these dates in Europe are the first. Symphony X will celebrate 25 years as a band with a co-headline tour of North America with Haken, a fellow progressive rock-loving band. Pretty cool. I once fell asleep at a Symphony X show. There's photographic evidence. Sorry, Symphony X. No disrespect. 
NotFest LA is just three weeks away at Bank of America Stadium, and the festival features Slipknot, Bring Me the Horizon, Kills Which Engage, Bended, and a bunch of other bands. Not too many shows where you can play your own show and watch your son play and have your wife open up, but Corey Taylor's gonna hit the triple bingo on that one. Speaking of Vended, the band which contains sons of Slipknot members Corey Taylor and Sean Crahan have booked a mini tour of the U.S. including the aforementioned Nonfest LA. Los Angeles hardcore show and the annual charity drive for the children is coming back to the Echoplex this December and it's got a killer lineup of the following bands. Comeback Kid, No Warning, Downpressor, Rude Awakening, The Killer, Jabalba, Judiciary, Section 8, Dead Heat, and Year of the Knife. Chainfest is coming back to Anaheim in a couple of weeks, and you can catch this amazing hardcore show. It's got a stacked lineup with co-headliners Jimmy Eat World and Taking Back Sunday, as well as Circus Survive, Mayday Parade, Acceptance, Amberlin, Cartel, and Envy on the Coast. Some of those bands are going to be playing special sets, so you don't want to miss it. Fire in the Mountains Festival in the shadows of the Grand Teton Mountains in Wyoming has announced its final bands for their festival curated by Ivar Buranson of Enslaved. Among the final artists announced for the festival are Emma Ruth Brundle, Hex Vessel, The Autolith, and Helen Money. Stoner Doom legend Matt Pike of High on Fire and Sleep has released an excerpt from his upcoming book of illustrated lyrics, Head on a Pike, coming out on Rare Bird Books very soon, and you can check that out at the link below with the pre-order. To honor the passing of Eddie Van Halen on the one-year anniversary of his death, the city of Pasadena unveiled a plaque at the Civic Auditorium where the band played their very first shows ever in their hometown. It was a really cool ceremony, and you can go visit that plaque right now. Surprising news is that Data Remember bassist Joshua Woodward has finally stepped down from the band following allegations of sex abuse and assault lodged against him last year. He made an apology at that time, took a hiatus from the band briefly. It was during the pandemic, so they didn't have much going on anyway. They've resumed touring, and now they got tapped as the opening band for Bring Me the Horizon in Europe, and Josh had taken this opportunity to resign. Belfagor is in the studio, and the great Austrian black and death metal band will release a new album in 2022. Mudvayne also played Aftershock this weekend, and they were joined by a mystery guitarist, Marcus Rafferty, who's been a touring tech and guitarist all over the metal community for years, appeared on stage in makeup with the band as sort of a secret member of the band. Not so secret as people noticed him on stage. But uh, congratulations, Marcus, and congratulations, Mudvayne. Trying to pull off those complex songs with an extra member. The Bronx has teamed up with Every Time I Die's Jordan Buckley on exclusive merch for their current single, High Five, off their brand new album, Bronx Six. American Teeth has announced their debut album and a brand new single, Kickflip, which you can check out now. Red Alert, y'all! Slash, featuring Miles Kennedy, are going to release a new album soon, according to an interview given by the man in the top hat himself. Slash just finished a huge North American tour with Guns N' Roses. Speaking of Slash, Slash band member Frank Sidoris was in a terrible car wreck this week, and we send a shout-out and well wishes to him and his wife on a speedy, speedy recovery. Dillinger Escape Plan is long gone and retired, but they are coming out with a series of NFTs celebrating their final album, Disassociation, and you can check that out right now. King's X fans rejoice. The band will be hitting the studio soon and plans to release their long-anticipated new album, their first on Golden Robot Records, next year. Doug Pennant gave a new interview with Disc about it. We have an interview coming up with Doug as well. Don't miss it. Not Loose, the hardcore up-and-coming band, has released a new EP, A Tear in the Fabric of Life. Very cool name and a very cool EP with a really cool visual accompaniment in the form of a teaser. Check it out. Machine had turned 30 years old this week, and legends from across rock and metal gave shout-outs to the band, including members of Metallica, Slayer, Exodus, Hailstorm, Testament, Death Angel, and many other bands. Interestingly enough, in Kerry King's shout-out to Machine Head, he admitted that he felt bad that Slayer quit too soon, and he fucking hates it in his own words. He regrets it. We expect an announcement from Kerry King soon about his new project, probably by 2022. Times of Grace has released a playthrough video of their song, The Burden of Belief, from their recent new album out on Roadrunner. The band features Jesse Leach and Adam D. of Kills with Engage. 
And finally in the news, acclaimed songwriter Frank Turner has announced his brand new album, F. THC, Frank Turner Hardcore, and that's exactly what it's going to be. It makes a hardcore punk, pop punk, dark folk in Americana, just like Frank does. He dropped a brand new single. You can pre-order the album now, and it's coming out early 2022. And now for a look at Who Rules It Streaming. This week's Who Rules It Streaming, we feature Annabelle from Cradle of Filth. You know her for her role in the band where she sings and plays keyboards. Backing up Danny Filth, does covers. She did a killer cover of Insomnium's While We Sleep. You can check it out now at all her socials. She was joined by her frequent collaborators, Danny Evans and Cody Johnstone. And now for a look at some of the music on New Music Friday. Hey y'all, God ends here. Metal Blade Records, The Agonist, Days Before the World Web DP, Napalm Records, Alcatraz, Five, Silver Lining, Cherubs, Slow Blow for Friends and Sexy EP, Relapse Records, Cranium, Unknown Heights, The Sign, Destiny, In Continual, Crimson and Season of Mist, Deviant Process, Nurture, Season of Mist, Devoid, Lonely Eye Movement, Frontiers SRL, Doug Pinnock, Joy Bomb, Rat Pack, Endure the Affliction, Evolve EP, Self Released, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes, Sticky, A Wall, Gemini Syndrome, Third Degree, The Rising, Century Media Records, The Georgia Thunderbolts, Can We Get a Witness, Mascot Records, Hate, Rugia, Metal Blade Records, The Hawkins, Aftermath, The Sign Records, High Desert Queen, Secrets of the Black Moon, Ripple Music, Hippotractor, Meridian, Pelagic Records, Ice Nine Kills, The Silver Scream 2, Welcome to Horrorwood, Fearless Records, Illudium, Ash of the Womb, Prophecy, Judas Priest, 50 Heavy Metal Years of Music Box Set, Sony, Lair of the White Worm, EP1 EP, APF and Trep Nation, Leverage, Above and Beyond, Frontiers SRL, Lords of Black, Alchemy of Souls Part 2, Frontiers SRL, Luthario, Hyrea, Self Released, The Melvins, Five Legged Dog, Epicac Recordings, Misanther, Ephemeris, Season of Mist Underground Activities, Naked Raygun, Over the Overlords, Audio Platter, Order, The Gospel, Listenable Records, Perpetual Etude, Now is the Time, Black Lodge Recordings, Reaping Asmodia, Darkened Infinity, Prosthetic, Red Scale, The Old Colossus, Majestic Mountain, Seether, Bicentennial, Two Decades of Seether, Craft Recordings, The Silver, Ward of Roses, Gilead Media, Snafu, Exile, Banishment, Housecore Records, The Stone Eye, South of the Sun, Eclipse Records, Super Static, Glimmering Veil, Solitude, Tunic, Quitter, Artifact, Twelve Foot Ninja, Vengeance, Volcanic, and Vilharta, Mastadin Under Vaden, Century Media Records. And now for a look in our mailbag. This week's mailbag, we feature the big one, our Super 7 Ghost Ultimates Papa Emeritus figure. This is awesome. I ordered this like eight months ago and it had it come in specially made. Each one of these is custom made and is amazing. Let's quickly open it up and take a look at this. Oh, comes in an awesome case with the crucifix and Ghost on the back. Oh my, look at the gold foil in this beautiful display case. Amazeballs. You made it to this part of the show, so you know what time it is. It's the end. Ghostcoldman.com is a small business. We really appreciate the support, so smash that like button. Ding that notification bell and find out every time we post new content, at least three every week. As we say every week at this juncture of the show, it's a tough time in the world, so please... Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay fucking metal.